improve your memory for studying. This course is all about different tips and tricks to improve your memory. So, let's start. Your Brain 101 The human brain is an efficient organ, and sometimes we don't keep information that we later wish we had. Our minds are full of memories and information accumulated over a lifetime, and we have basically two types of memory to help organize all this stuff. Short-term memory equals things we are doing right now, very sharp. And long-term memory equals things we've done in the past, much duller. The goal here is to better encode information into your long-term memory so that it'll be available later for, say, a pop quiz or test. I'll talk about specific techniques to help you do this coming up. Set the scene. Start off with choosing a study spot where your focus can rest fully on the task at hand to help with the encoding of memory. Even if you think you're a multitasking ninja, your conscious mind can only focus on one thing at a time. So eliminate any distractions. A quiet room with good lighting is best for reading. In a classroom, the ideal scenario is taking notes with pen and paper. Or if you're a laptop note taker, at least shut off any notifications from popping up to remind you that you've gone 15 minutes without checking Facebook. Look. Failing to prepare yourself to learn will render most of the following tricks and tips useless. We know life isn't perfect, and you can't always have the ideal setting available for studying. But with a little advanced planning, it's absolutely doable. Be present. If you can restate what you've heard in a lecture in your own words, your chances of remembering later are much higher than if you listen passively. This is called attending, and there are many ways to do it, writing notes during a lecture instead of just listening, or in a one-on-one -on -one session with your professor saying this is what I think you said, and then putting it in your own words. Just be sure that your laptop and other distractions are put away to enable you to focus solely on the task at hand. Keep calm and study on. Stress decreases your ability to encode and retrieve memories. My guess is that if you are reading this article, then that's the last thing you want to do. This stress impact can be reduced with meditation, focused breathing or even yoga. Anything you do to relax and reduce stress can and likely will help your memory. Go to bed. Yes, your mom was right. Those all-nighters are doing you more harm than good. While you may think the extra hours of studying will get you the grade you want, studies have proven that sleep is vital for memory. Getting enough sleep every night and maintaining as regular a sleep and wake time as possible will go miles toward a better memory. Exercise A good workout won't just help your memory, but it may reduce stress and help you sleep. Triple whammy. This doesn't mean you need to spend an hour on the treadmill every day. Simply electing to take the stairs instead of the elevator or walking the three blocks to your favorite coffee shop instead of taking the bus can make a difference. Outsource your brain. Know a great way to help your memory? Stop relying on your brain to remember every little detail. In the age of calendar apps, let your phone remember the dentist appointment. You focus on the power rule for your calculus exam. Focus on the learning process. Let's face it, nothing can replace the time you put in effectively studying and learning new material. Studying early and often will always beat last minute cramming. But inevitably with all the things competing for your time in college, you'll find yourself the night before a test wondering how you're ever going to get all that information in your head. 
That's why I'm going to focus the rest of the tips on some specific techniques that can be real life savers for speeding up the memorization process. Acronyms You've likely heard of PEMDAS, the acronym that helped us all to memorize the order of operations in elementary school. By remembering this made up word, you can recall the sequence of words that align with each letter, parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. Try making up your own acronyms as easy shortcuts to memorizing everything from historical events to chemical processes. Acrostics Similarly, acrostics are words comprised of the first letters of other words. But typically you use them to join longer phrases or concepts. Create connections and associations. Connecting something you know to a new concept you're trying to learn can help fix that new concept in your memory. For example, knowing that gravity causes things to move faster and faster toward the Earth when dropped, you may associate acceleration with gravity. Acceleration is like gravity but can be in any direction. Repetition, listening. We all memorize through repetition when we listen to our favorite song a hundred times and suddenly realize we know every word. In the same way, when you listen to a definition you're trying to memorize as either you or a friend repeat it over and over, then you'll remember it more quickly. Repetition, doing. This method is common with musicians and athletes. Perhaps a violinist can't seem to memorize a few measures of music, she might repeat the same notes until her fingers seem to play the notes on their own. Repetition, reading. If you want to remember the order of a story for a presentation, it may help to read its summary several times. When you reach the point of knowing what's about to happen before you read it, then you know you've memorized the order of events. Repetition, writing. When it comes to things like new terms and spelling differences, sometimes writing and rewriting something until it becomes second nature can help you to memorize it. Rhyme keys. This method typically is used with a list in which order is important. You first link each number to a word that rhymes with it. For example, number one could be sun, and two could be blue. To keep two things in order, you might tell a story with these rhyme keys. If butter is first and cheese is second, then you could tell the following little story to remember, the butter melts in the sun with the blue cheese. Visualize Engage as many senses as you can. Maybe you want to remember a battle for your European history class. Close your eyes and think about the sequence of events. What happened first? Imagine it. Imagine the sound the boats made as they raced toward the shore. What happened second? Imagine the sound of the cannons as they were fired. What happened third? Smell the smoke of a fire. Engage as many of your senses as you can. When you recall that first event, go through the same process until you've memorized it. Storylines Engage the narrative part of your brain. Create a story or dramatize one you already know. Maybe you need to remember a chemical reaction. Give the carbon and hydrogen a story. For example, tell the story of their breakup and new relationships. By making these mundane things into characters, you give yourself new things to remember about them, and maybe have a little fun doing it too. This method has saved students when they had to remember dozens of physics formulas. Chunking Our working, or short term, Memories can only retain 5 to 9 pieces of information at a time. To make the best use of this memory limitation, we can remember the same number of chunks of information instead. 
for example, as opposed to thinking of each digit of a phone number individually, we tend to think of them in groups. This turns a 10 digit number into 3 chunks, helping us to memorize it. This idea would help us remember 8 numbers by thinking of them as 2 years. For example, cent. Yes, you read that right. Studies such as one conducted by Annalise Sive, Don Pierre Roy A, and Jane Ply have shown that smells can evoke memories. These memories are typically more likely to be sensations or situations rather than specific facts, episodic memory. So, if you were to always chew mint gum in your biology class, while it may not help you directly to remember the chemical formula for glucose, it will evoke the memory of Method of loci This method is also known as the mind palace. Imagine you're walking through your very own castle. You greet George Washington as you step into the foyer, and you greet Barack Obama as you step out of the back door after meeting each of the presidents in various locations in between. You remember the order of the rooms you walked through, and by mentally placing the presidents in those rooms by chronological order, you'll Image Name Associations that girl who lives down the hall, maybe it's Pess. You know you won't remember her name alone, but you notice she has hair so long you wonder how she buttons her jeans. You now think of her as Bess whose hair is a mess, and now you've associated a defining feature with her name, which will help you remember it. This could work in other situations. Chaining when you have a series or chain of things to memorize, you can utilize your visual memory despite having verbal ideas to remember. To do this, you can make up a story as silly or as realistic as you want to chain the unrelated ideas together. For example, three monkeys made a point of going in one time it right. If you study before bed, your brain is better able to process that complicated information during sleep. Just know that this relies on you actually getting enough sleep to allow your brain to do its work. Attach Emotion We often remember embarrassing or negative emotions more so than positive ones. So we remember those things we first got wrong in a study group more than the things we could teach others. If you Organize. If you organize a list of names you must remember in alphabetical order, you'll more easily notice that you skipped a name if you've jumped from A names to C names. Get moving. Walking or other gentle exercise allows us to occupy the part of our brain that is idle.